This is the water cycle. When it rains, sleets, snows, or hails, water goes in one of two directions to end back in ponds, lakes, and oceans. Either it soaks into the ground where it gets filtered, or it runs over the ground's surface. Imagine pouring water into a pitcher with a filter. As you pour, the water seeps through the filter and fills up the pitcher before spilling over. In a forester field, rain soaks into the ground, is filtered by the soil, and nourishes the plants and wildlife. Now, imagine that pitcher has its lid on. When you try to pour water into it, the water runs off the lid without ever getting filtered, spilling onto the floor immediately. This is what happens when it rains in our city. Instead of soaking into the earth, water flows directly over roofs, roads, sidewalks, and parking lots. Along the way, it picks up road salts, sand, pesticides, oil, grease, animal waste, and garbage then swirls into the nearest storm drain and gushes into rivers and streams that lead to Narragansett Bay. Just over the summer of 2013, polluted stormwater runoff contributed to 119 beach closures across Rhode Island. In the city of Providence, pavement and buildings cover almost 60% of the ground. Stormwater runoff floods streets and basements and pollutes rivers that run into the bay, as well as smaller water bodies like Mashapog Pond and the Roger Williams Park Ponds. To reduce the flooding and pollution from stormwater runoff, we need to improve our drainage system, or infrastructure. Right now, the city mostly uses gray infrastructure, meaning street drains, catch basins, and 400 miles of underground pipes to channel untreated stormwater directly into our water bodies. How can we better manage our stormwater to prevent flooding and pollution? We can imitate the natural water cycle through green infrastructure, using plants, soils, and natural processes to clean and make good use of the rain. Roofs covered with plants, for instance, can capture rain that would normally run off buildings onto streets and sidewalks. These green roofs both absorb the rain and provide helpful insulation, cooling buildings in summer and heating them in winter. Rain gardens capture water so it soaks into the soil and gets used by native plants. In place of curbs and gutters, rain gardens along gently sloped ditches can channel and treat polluted runoff from parking lots and roads. And green roofs and green gardens are only a couple examples of green infrastructure. Green infrastructure projects beautify our communities and protect the natural ecosystems around us. Over their lifetime, they can raise property values and save drainage infrastructure costs. Cities throughout the country are realizing this. New York City's green infrastructure plans will save the city $1.5 billion over 20 years compared with gray infrastructure alternatives. Philadelphia hopes to spend at least $1.6 billion retrofitting gray infrastructure over the next 25 years. And within the next two years, Los Angeles wants to invest $200 million in green infrastructure. Rhode Island has also made strides in reducing stormwater impacts. We're in the process of revamping our combined sewer system so that during rainstorms, Stormwater contaminated with raw sewage is captured and held until after the rain subsides, so it can be treated instead of released directly into Narragansett Bay. Rhode Island's stormwater manual sets high standards for property development that minimizes harmful impacts to the environment. And state leaders have designated money for green infrastructure investments. But a lot still needs to be done to reshape the way we manage stormwater. You can start by sharing what you've learned and thinking about ways to capture the rain in your own yard. ristormwatersolutions.org has ideas for how to build rain gardens, disconnect the downspouts, and use a rain barrel on your home or workplace. Beyond that, though, you can help reimagine a cleaner, greener Providence. The next step will require both creativity and a significant investment. Managing stormwater in a city is inevitably expensive, whether it's gray or green. But proactively installing green infrastructure and watching what we put into our gray infrastructure help ensure the long-term vibrancy and success of our neighborhoods. Envision Providence's cityscape teeming with trees and gardens, all of it harnessing water instead of dirtying and wasting it. 
This would be a city with healthy communities, clean air and water, and resources to manage climate change impacts like high heat days and more intense and frequent storms. With one solution, we can revitalize our urban spaces, boost our economy, and protect our natural resources. It's time we reconnected with the water cycle that has been there all along. This video was brought to you by the Rhode Island Land and Water Partnership. With help from Sheila Dormady and the City of Providence's Office of Sustainability, Lorraine Jupert and the University of Rhode Island's Nonpoint Education for Municipal Officials program, Elizabeth Scott and the Division of Water Resources at Rhode Island's Department of Environmental Management, the Rhode Island Foundation, Amy Paris of the Rhode Island Department of Health, and many others. Special thanks to Meg Kerr, Holly Ewald, Casey Dunn, and the Granoff Center for Creative Arts at Brown University.